Every Raspberry Pi starts its life on the production line here at the Sony Tech Center in Pencoed, Wales, UK. I was honored to be invited to share with you an inside look at the high-tech manufacturing line for the Pi 4, where they've made nearly 50 million Raspberry Pis in the past decade. Every employee I talked to was focused on making every Pi reliable and efficient, and it was fascinating learning about the history of the factory and how the line works. My name's Andrew Panton. I'm a leading engineer for the new business development team here at Sony UK Tech. I've been here just a tad over 26 years now. What we say is that the life of Raspberry Pi, should we say, this actually begins in our SMT department, which is surface mount technology. And in that area, this is where the actual individual circuit boards get populated. They come in a panel of nine, each individual circuit board gets populated. The first part of that process is applying solder paste to the board. That gets done by a screen printer. So very similar to had many, many years ago and how you'd actually manufacture a book. The squeegee actually puts the, the fresh paste down onto the circuit board. Then we apply all the individual components. Now, it's very unique how we apply these individual components. It's like building a city, for example. We start with the very small houses or the very small components and then build up the larger components. The reason they do that is because the heads on the pick-and-place machine, that Catlin gun-like thing that spits circuits onto the solder paste, uses a tiny puff of air to jam the components into the paste. The head has to get really close to the board, like a millimeter or two. Because of that, they have to put the shorter components down first, then the larger ones. <laughs> Otherwise, the tools would obliterate the larger components while they're spinning around. So the initial key is smaller components on the underside of the board, and they get crosses first, then the larger components on the top side of the board, and they get done last. Employees changed out these component reels a few times while I was there. Right now, the reel with the SOC at the heart of the pie, this big square chip, is the major bottleneck. When they run out, they have to shut down the entire line until they get more. After the pick-and-place machines, the PCBs head into the reflow oven. So one of the key things about the reflow oven is the temperature as it progresses in. So it's quite a long oven, and it starts off at the lower sort of the 150 degrees, and then moves up to the 260 degrees. And there's a reason for this. So when the actual circuit board gets in, if there's moisture in it, we slowly need to remove that moisture from the process. Because if we heat it instantly up to the highest temperature, you'll get something called popcorn, which can damage the parts. Those moisture will get inside the components and they'll burst out. So you could say that the Raspberry Pis are baked in an oven. Yeah, Raspberry Pis, we bake Raspberry Pis here. At a few points, I saw machines taking tons of pictures of the board, so I asked about them. Through the s line as well, we have various ever, we have um, AOI inspection, which is automatic inspection of the drill components. Make sure everything is placed correctly, correct locations, nothing's missing. If any flaw was found, the board was pulled for manual rework. The boards were marked by hand so they could get these boards back of the line quickly. They have dozens of hoppers of completed boards at the end of the SMD line. And before getting to the next part, I asked Andrew about the factory's history. And a little bit of history about the building. It was actually opened, Sony first came here in 1973. And how Sony came here was who is now King Charles, met with our, one of our founder members uh, in Japan, Marita-san. So this factory where we're in today was actually opened by the Queen in 1992, and this is now the UK Technology Centre here in Pencoid, South Wales. So if I fast forward it a couple of years to where we are now, our core products, as you can see behind me here, are broadcast professional cameras, our master setup units, camera control units, and OLED viewfinders. One of the most visually impressive parts of the line is where the larger through-hole components are placed one by one by these dutiful robots. The next stage is where we'll actually apply the likes of the Ethernet ports, the USBs and headphone jacks. And in that part of the process right now we're using collaborative robots to place those components. A while back this entire process was done by hand by employees. And some people watching this will probably lament the fact that humans are being replaced by robots. but. Look closely at how these robots actually place the components. That little wiggle you see, that was programmed in by a human. Programming the robots requires a ton of back and forth between engineers, line workers, and the robot manufacturers to get them to work reliably for placing millions of components. These robots mostly make the line faster. There are still humans loading in component trays, feeding the robots with the raw parts that go on the boards, or clearing up jams. The robots increase line capacity and free the humans to do other things better. Like look at those GPIO pins. There's a custom hopper that uses only vibration to align a relatively complex part perfectly every time. How cool is that? But the robots aren't perfect and that's why there's always a human at the end of this part of the line placing the last few components the robots can't get to. In fact, I got to see what it takes to clean up after the robots. 
I've been told that I could try doing this and see how good I am yeah. at it. No problem. And try not to make a huge mess <laughs> at your station. You've got a body double, right? Look how I He's my brother. You've got about 27 seconds for every oh boy. panel. Could you take a seat? I'm going to try this out. So you should only have to put in the four GPIOs, so these bottom four. Yep. So they're uh, short end down. Oh. You should know. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, perfect. Yeah. I've put together some of these, you know. <laughs> but only like one every year. <laughs> Yeah. And okay. then, so then you've got a five Ethernet there. And oh boy. So you've got a, a two uh -oh. in the middle left. I heard a beep. I hope that wasn't me. Yeah. After you've done that, it's just a, it's a quick sense check and making sure that all the components on the board. So you've got the three, the two USBs, the, the Ethernet. Yeah. All looks four good. pins. And then you press this button. I did it. <laughs> There's a little bit of a backlog. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta be as fast as the robot. It doesn't get up straight. Trying again. I don't know if you've got any other plans or... It's slightly therapeutic, but it's also <laughs> slightly nerve-wracking because when you touch it, sometimes you touch another component. Yeah, so the robots are, are pretty accurate, but not 100%. And now I know if I need a body double. Whoops. <laughs> I'm going to head. break everything here. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. These employees are an essential part of the line before the final selective soldering process. And right before that, I caught sight of the little Sony Atrios box. I wonder what AI they're doing inside there. The next stage from there, we'll be going through into our selective soldering process. So this is where it gets heated up to around 260 degrees. Into a process up to, I think, finally 275 degrees, where the solder becomes molten, and we apply the solder through individual jets to the, the components such as Ethernet, and that obviously cools off then, and that goes into a final stage of the process. This process is a little more directed than wave soldering, and it's a critical part of the manufacturing line. They have tons of these expensive blocks of pure solder ready to go into the molten bath. This machine has four giant screws that very methodically dips the board into the bath and slowly pulls it out, ensuring a perfect connection on hundreds of through holes on every set of pie boards. Oh, and don't drink that. After the selective soldering, the boards go through a cooling chamber. And under that chamber, I found one of the 15 or so Raspberry Pis I could find along the manufacturing line that are building other Raspberry Pis. Pis building Pis! I even did a video on the Revolution Pi last year, so go check that out if you want. On the topic of Pi products you could find in a factory, Seed Studio sponsored this video and they just launched the ReTerminal DM. It's built around a Compute Module 4 which is also made right here in the Sony factory. This thing can integrate with Node-RED for low-code programming and event-driven applications. It has a rugged design with an IP65 front panel and electrically isolated I.O. It's great for any kind of HMI, from a premium home assistant controller to industrial use. Seed Studio also offers ODM services. They can help with everything from product development and R&D to production and support. Even this re-terminal DM could be customized for your use case. They're releasing even more new products based on the Pi, like this Rerouter, a travel router also based on the Compute Module 4, or their Edgebox line of industrial Pi computers. Check out Seed's Raspberry Pi blog for more, and check out the links in the description. After the boards cool down in this little wind tunnel, they're checked one last time by a technician, and any little spot that needs a little extra solder gets it. Then, one of the most impressive parts of the line is this, the giant farm of 64 fully automated test jigs. They all get individually tested in a bed of nails test fixture and all the likes of the SD card, the HDMI connections, headphone jacks, they'll be automatically connected as part of our test jig. Then there will be pass or fail at that stage. 99% of them will be a pass. And I kept finding more and more of these little boxes, inside of which is another Raspberry Pi. Pi's building Pi's all over the place here. But that brings me to something I sensed as I talked to the Sony employees, and even when I was discussing how they build Pis with Gordon Hollingworth over in the labs at Pi HQ. Sony and Raspberry Pi worked together to build the test jig, and they even have a manual version of it at Pi HQ so they can continually improve it. Like, one time they found out if someone loaded a component upside down, it would still work, but not the right way. So they modified the jig at Pi HQ to make sure it would detect that error, passed the knowledge to the Sony engineers, and one by one they got all the jigs in the factory upgraded. Now, that problem can never happen again. And having this kind of tight relationship means when Raspberry Pi discovers new things in their labs, they can quickly iterate on the manufacturing process to make it better and better. Andrew said he's been involved with Raspberry Pi since the very beginning. Um, I was involved with the Raspberry Pi, the initial introduction, and that was back in around 2012. 
their values and behavior seem to match a lot with ours so we thought let's give these guys a chance and you know what the rest is history now how many pies did they predict that you would be manufacturing initially so we thought we were going to be in the tens of thousands uh, this quickly increased and i think by 2013 we'd actually manufactured a millionth pie and where we are today this year we're aiming to hit over 50 millionth pie one line that looks like it's changed a lot from the older videos I've seen is the packing line. It's 100% automated and full of clever engineering tricks. I'm privileged to be um, one of the members who actually developed that stage of the process and who's effectively a year of our lives. So we've done some exploratory work in how people package in processes in the food and drink industry, in the pharmaceutical industry, and we've developed it into our process here. How we've done that is we've minimized how we deliver the boxes in so they all become flat packed. We actually erect the boxes here and they're automatically glued into a, a, a punch machine. Once that punch machine goes into an indexing conveyor, the actual boards, the manuals and the individual reading cards are placed with them. Then we automatically place the pies on top. Then they will go through a final stage which is a mechanical means of closing it and, gl and gluing the box. And I wanted to spend a little more time on this part of the line because it was fascinating. So many different noises and motions, I could probably spend half an hour mesmerized by any one part. But this little robot, it picks up a tested pie off the line and holds it over this little scanner. The scanner checks it out, and if everything's good, into the box it goes. Then, as the pies come out of the machine, this little piston does what it does. It used to help align the side flaps, then it kept things tucked in the box. I love this piston because it's a reminder of how this line evolves over time, and because it still tries its best no matter what. Then there's another quality assurance test, a camera that takes a picture of each box before it gets sealed up for good. You can see that each time you see the flash. Then this fun machine shuffles the pies over to the final line, where some of the cleverest engineering results in a nicely closed box. The metal flap in the middle holds the side flaps down, while a metal bar slowly presses the lid down. The blue box squirts a couple blobs of glue on the outside, then one more metal flap bends down the lid, completing the packaging process. At that stage then we'll actually weigh the box to make sure all the individual components are fitted. Then they will be selected at the end of the process to be packaged into the box. So you'll get 150 into a final box then for shipment. That last little check measures the box's weight to the gram. If anything is missing, it'll pop the package out. But I love this little 3D printed flapper that swats the pie along on its way if no other pie comes along to push it off the scale in time. There we go. Then we automatically pack them, place them into the box and get them shipped out to a warehouse. At the end of my day at the factory, I waited for one more box to roll off the line. Yay. Normally, a worker would tape it and stack it, but they let me hold one of the thousands and thousands of pies they made that day, at least for a second. We, we produce these pies, I think they're in quantities of 180 to 200,000 a week. Right now we're producing pies, like we say, is every 3.14 seconds. <laughs> and that's just the Pi 4. The factory was making Pi 3B+, Pi 0, and even some CM4 and CM4S while I was there. Have you ever thought about building an automated test jig for a CM4? It's hard, but Sony has one. And just like with the Pi 4, the CM4's test jig has another Raspberry Pi hiding inside. There's also the CM4S, which is a child of the shortage. I can't imagine the pain some engineers had to go through building the automated test jigs that can survive thousands of insertions of basically what amounts to a stick of RAM. So when we initially started conversations with the guys from Raspberry Pi, it was very quick to understand that we shared the same values and behaviors, all about inspiring the next generation. And where we are today, we continue to inspire each other to drive things forward.